Sorry, every time I'm in this room, I get distracted because there's these huge windows and I can just see a lot going on out there. Episode three today, we're talking about how difficult it can be to come up with ideas. I've heard from other YouTubers that it doesn't get easier with the development of ideas because as you grow, as you get bigger, and as people start to wanna, you know, as people start taking interest in your videos, People want to keep getting captivated. I think one of the frustrating things for me in, in that field of idea development is you can get caught between two different battles. On the one hand, you want to develop ideas that you're passionate about, but then you've got the kind of videos, the kind of ideas that you need to be putting out in order to drive engagement. And you got to be towing the line. I want to work on passion ideas because that's what I'm passionate about. I want to flex. Uh, certain skill sets and, and I want to develop certain uh, certain skills that take a certain video that are just really more for me and so I have to t I have to take time to do those things those things reinvigorate me when I go back and rewatch the things I was passionate about and see the energy that I put into it it keeps me going and then on the other side too I also have to understand that there are videos that are going to drive traffic and you can also mix a little bit of passion into that it doesn't have to be monotonous like you're doing some product review for a company you don't even care about like I'm not saying that um, those types of videos that drive content, put passion into that, make it creative, make it your own so that when people watch them, they realize there's something different there. It doesn't sound like everybody else. But I think it drives, it gets back to the point of how do you come up with ideas, especially, you know, if your consistency demands that you pump out new things uh, every week or however long you're doing it and keep it with a kind of freshness to it. And to that, uh, I hate to say I have no answer for it. And that really, that's the point of this whole episode, this whole uh, series is, we don't really have to have an answer for it, but let's just talk through it and let's just flesh out some some frustrations, <laughs> you know? Uh, for, me, for me, and I, this is what I'm gonna encourage anybody to really adopt, steal this idea as much as you can. I struggle coming up with video ideas. The fact that I've been able to come up with one video a week is insane to me because I never thought it's I struggle thinking of what I'm gonna do next week and here's here's how here's what I have found to really be helpful the entire channel right now for me is to document the journey of somebody learning how to use a camera somebody learning all the theories and the techniques that go into filming and video I am nowhere near anywhere the level of an expert I'm not even I'm so far away I'm not even gonna consider myself a photographer or videographer or much less a youtuber so i don't have all the answers but what has allowed me to keep coming up with new ideas is i want to learn and there's a there's you're never going to stop learning now what i've introduced into that process is a camera documenting the journey of what i go through to learn the process it's resulted in all the videos i've come up to now uh, it's resulting in the pov shots that i'm doing uh, the, it's resulted in the POV shorts that I'm putting out every day. So that gives me another excuse to put a camera on my chest while I'm, you know, holding my camera going out to urban or into nature scenarios. So it's led to a lot of other little ideas that drives the traffic, but it's just introducing a camera into the learning process. So if you're in any field you're in, if you want to start a YouTube channel, but you struggle with idea development, think about Think about what you're doing, think about what you're learning, think about the, the, the developmental process and just throw in a camera into the mix. Find creative ways to put, to let us in on your process. If you're a crane operator or you drive tow trucks or you drive semis, I mean, it could be the most, the most like mundane thing you can think about. If you, if you, if you mow people's lawns, throw a camera in there, make time lapses, talk us through what's going on with machinery, what's your day like, Talk, just talk us through. You'd be very surprised who's interested. And while I find my footing, while I find my niche, and while, while, I, while I figure everything out, I'm just taking you guys along for the ride. And so every week, I'm able to come up with a new video because maybe I'm learning something, or maybe I'm putting something to the test. Maybe I just bought a new product and I wanna take it out into the wilderness and see what it's like metaphorically wilderness you know into the wild and so it, it when you think of when you when you think of a channel like that it opens up so many doors because now literally anything you do with that tech or with that field that you're in becomes a content you don't really have to think twice about it 
break it up in several parts if you want to talk about one specific topic. And I think the important thing too is do not worry about who's going to watch it. One of the things that's just the weirdest thing for me to hear is when I hear people on YouTube that have thousands or millions of subscribers and they'll say in podcasts or behind the scenes videos, they felt like, you know, if they have several million subscribers, but only 10, 50,000 people watch them. They'll say it feels weird saying that nobody watched it because they're comparing their numbers, what they envisioned people would watch, the amount of people that they envisioned would watch to the people that are actively following them. I think that that is something that starts from early on. And I have found myself with only, not, I'm not even at 2,000 subscribers and I don't even care about how many people watch the video because I want to do things for the pure enjoyment of it and bring people along who are equally passionate about it. That's come in some of, in, in all of my videos. I think in my first couple of videos, I may have done this, but in all of my videos, I don't tell people to subscribe or like the, 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 the video. You know, I'll tell people to leave a comment just to engage because I, I thoroughly love enjoying, I thoroughly love um, com conversing with people, but I'll never tell people to subscribe or, or like the video because you know how to do that. <laughs> you don't need anybody to tell you how to do that. Um, what I wanna do is I want to give you an opportunity into my world. If you enjoy it, great, you stick around. If you don't, okay, that's fine. There's, there's, there's thousands of other people better to watch and I encourage you to go find those people. But I will never be, I, I want to get into that mindset because as I get uh, further down the road, I never want to look at the people looking at my videos and thinking that my ideas were not worth it and we're not that good because the amount of people watching it is lower than what I've expected or according to the numbers I may have in, in any given uh, time and in, in place. Now, I'm gonna cut the video right here just because I think I'm rambling at this point, but I hope that the first part of this video makes sense as far as how to make content, how to co continue coming up with videos. It's just dot, introduce a camera into your natural environment, into everything that you do or with the process that you wanna document and just go about your normal process. Just go about the normal, your way of life. And people are going to catch on if they're interested. If they're not, that's fine as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And yeah, that's it. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. See you next week. Bye.